Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today we're taking a look at a white, blue and red or a Jeskai colored dragons deck. And this deck is all about the synergy between a Sarkon Soul of Flame alongside Twin Flame Tyrant from Foundations, a 5 mana 3-5 flying dragon, saying if a source we control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals double that damage instead. So if we play a turn 3 Sarkon, discounting dragons by 1 mana, we can already play the Twin Flame on turn 4, and then whenever a dragon we control enters, we can have Sarkon become a copy of it until end of turn, except its name is still Sarkon and it's legendary in addition to its other types. That ability pretty useful when casting a legendary dragon to make sure we don't have to sacrifice Sarkon to the legendary rule. So yeah, Sarkon into Twin Flame means we now have a pair of 3-5s, and then a Sarkon as a 3-5 gets to attack, dealing double the 3-5's damage, so that's 6, doubled again since we have 2 of them in play, so that's 12 damage from a single creature attacking. So if we have any other dragons attacking, we're likely getting in for lethal, or we might be able to attack with a hasty Twin Flame Tyrant, thanks to the Orb of Dragonkind, which can make a red mana if we tap it, and if we spend that mana to cast a dragon creature spell, it also gains haste until end of turn, so another perfect way to ramp out our Twin Flame ahead of schedule. And then other cards from Foundations include Dragon Lord's Servant, which also gives our Dragon Spells a 1 mana discount, so a way to ramp in a red deck, which is pretty unusual. And then we've got some burn spells as well. Burst Lightning can deal 2 damage for 1 mana, or we can kick it to deal 4 damage instead. Also very synergistic with the Twin Flame, as we can double the damage from our burn spells to trying to close out the game. Then we also have a uh, Shivan Devastator here, which we can cast at any point in our curve. So just another dragon to kind of smooth out our curve a little bit. And all those dragons are important to reveal to an invasion of Tarkir, which when it enters can deal 2 plus X damage to any other target, where X is the number of dragons we can reveal from our hand. So with two dragons, this can deal 4 damage, which is pretty good. And then if we manage to transform the battle, we get a Defiant Thunder Maw, which is a 4-4 dragon with flying and trample, saying whenever any dragon we control attacks, it deals 2 damage to any target. So that can trigger multiple times in a single attack step, which can also be quite devastating, especially with a Twin Flame doubling all that damage once again. Now do keep in mind, if we have a Twin Flame Tyrant on the battlefield, it doesn't help us deal double the damage to the Invasion of Tarkir, because we're still the controller of the battle, so it's not going to double the damage dealt to it even from our burn spells, whereas damage to the opponent's permanence or the opponent directly will get doubled, so that's an important distinction to make. And then we've got Colagon's Warmonger at 3 mana as well, another Dragon Synergy card, 3-2 with haste. When it attacks, we get to look at the top 6 cards of our library to reveal a dragon and put it into our hand. So that's another nice leftover from Aftermath alongside a Sarkon. So hopefully the Warmonger can find lots of dragons. We don't have a ton in the deck if you actually look at it, but most of them are at 5 mana, so it's important to have that early mana acceleration with the discounts from Servant, Sarkon, and the ramp from the Orb, otherwise we might be stuck with a bunch of 5 mana dragons in hand. Besides Twin Flame, we also have two copies of a Dragonhawk, Fates Tempest, a 5-5 with flying, so also it benefits from gaining haste through the Orb, and then when it enters or attacks we get to exile a number of cards from our library, where X is the number of four powered creatures we control, and then for each card we don't play from exile that turn, we get to deal two damage to each opponent. It's also quite synergistic with Twin Flame Tyrant, doubling the damage from the ability. And then the reason to splash a bit of white in this deck is to incorporate Zergo and Ojutai, a 4-4 with Flying and Haste, and Hexproof as long as it entered this turn. So that's a great way to counteract Instant Speed Removal, which can be pretty effective against our 5 mana dragons otherwise. And whenever one or more dragons we control deal combat damage to a player or battle, we can look at the top 3 cards of our library, putting one of those into our hand and the rest on the bottom in a random order. So we get to anticipate, and we may return one of those dragons to its owner's hand, so we can maybe pick up Zergo and Ojutai once again, so it can also play around Sorcery Speed Sweepers, and we can make our dragons uncounterable thanks to Cavern of Souls, so we can beat counter spells as well, and this also of course makes it easier to splash Zergo and Ojutai, as it also fixes our colors, and then add Fabled Passage and a Plains, and we can pretty easily support the splashed Zergo and Ojutai, which I think is worth it. 
And then rounding out the deck, we've got a few more burn spells besides Burst Lightning. We've got a Lightning Strike, also useful for potentially transforming our battle just by dealing damage to it. And then Pyroclasm, a catch-up mechanism against aggro decks, especially the go-wide variety, dealing two damage to each creature. And this can also synergize with our Twin Flame Tyrant, as we get to double the damage dealt to the opponent's permanence this way. So also quite powerful. And then the mana base, as we mentioned, playing Cavern, alongside Fabled Passage with one of each Plains and Islands, and six Mountains to fetch up, and then a bunch more blue-red dual lands to help support Sarkon and Zergon Ojitai. Could potentially replace Fabled Passage with a uh, secluded courtyard, naming Dragon, since we don't really need white mana for non-creature spells. But if you are interested in maybe playing this in best of three and want some blue spells out of the sideboard, then Fabled Passage getting Island is probably going to be the better pick. And we might also need lots of red mana to cast some of our non-creature spells in the same turn. So then Passage might still be the better pick over Secluded Courtyard. But of course, you will sometimes have to deal with a tap land. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand, assuming we can find an extra land or two. Especially a white mana for Zergon Ojitai would be great. So I'll take a Cavern of Souls, Fabled Passage on turn one. Opponent on a red deck and a Tomb Raider, so it might be Pirates. Alright, second Zergon Ojitai, probably our worst draw. But still holding out hope. And it is indeed Pirates. And uh, Lost Jite, can't wait for them to equip. Alright, so at least deal with the Tomb Raider. And now hope for a land, which we did find, and it's even a Cavern of Souls. So, I think Sarkon still makes the most sense. Now with any land, I get to play Zergon Ojitai. And at 4 toughness, it's not that easy for the pirate deck to remove. Although Larsenist is an answer. Also would have been able to target the orb for what it's worth. So, now what? Could still go orb into Warmonger, and then next turn we can play Zergon Ojitai regardless. Or we could play Zergon Ojitai now, but then that requires sacking Sarkon. I guess with the author line that's also the case. Yeah, maybe it is Zergon Ojitai, leave it on the battlefields. And then we'll likely find something useful to set up our next turn. Paraclasm, Tyrant, or a tapped land. Yeah, I mean, Paraclasm could have its uses. Tyrant, I can cast with a land. Yeah, I think I'll take the Tyrant still. And we'll keep Zergon Ojitai on the battlefield. If they want to remove it, fine. We've got another one. Our opponent does not equip Jite. Because they have a Witch Talker Frenzy. Yep. Alright, pretty great answer here when we've got a bunch of five toughness creatures throughout. Sarkon, an interesting draw. Might be the play here, as it can also try and hold off another attack. And sets up the Tyrant combo. Would only be 12 damage if we play Tyrant next turn. Breaches can prevent Sarkon from blocking. And a land. So we do have a few options. One of them just playing Zergon Ojitai, and then next turn we're setting up lethal with tyrants. And I might be able to find a cheap burn spell to cast in the meantime. Could also just play the tyrants, and then we'll have a large blocker on defense while Sarkon puts the opponent to four. Yeah, that's probably better. And can tap Cavern to represent some interaction. So it's not quite lethal. If we had a Burst Lightning here, for instance, we would have been able to deal a bunch more damage. Eight to be exact. Now we'll see if they can answer the Twin Flame. If they do, we're still not dead on board. And then Zergon Ojitai can cross the finish line. 
Of course, breaches can once again prevent us from blocking. So we are within burn range. And our opponent's got another Larcenist. To exile Twin Flame. And now they also have a blocker for Zergo, but with Sarkon we'll have two of them in play. And now Dragonhawk, also a great option. Opponent's got one mana left with GTA. They could untap a land potentially. But if I play the Dragonhawk, we have two in play. So that should just burn them out without even needing to attack. Although could have also tried Orb into Dragonhawk. Although it might get messy if uh, there's somehow a counterspell involved. And that'll do it. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have most of the pieces we need. Just need a couple more lanes. For now, get to keep up turn 1 interaction, turn 2 servant, turn 3 Sarkon. Let's just play a 3 mana tyrant potentially. And our opponents go to duress, so we may as well deal 2 to their face. So our opponent knows what we're working with. Devastators, decent once we get both Sarkon and Servant in play, as we can potentially get two more mana for free. And then really hoping for an additional land next turn. We got it. So, opponent might have removal up here. I think I still am better off with the opponent removing Sarkon as opposed to the Warmonger before it gets a chance to trigger. Because finding more dragons is a good way to outgrind the discard deck. But yeah, I expect to go for the throat end of turn. Yep. And Deep Cavern Bands next. So they could still have a cutdown in hand, which is enough to answer the Warmonger. Opponent does take the Twin Flame. But now I can cast the Devastator for four. Does not seem like they had a cutdown in hand. And now another Bat can take it. Alright, so a couple good top decks, Pyroclasm comes to mind, answering both bats, any of our burn spells, especially Invasion of Tarkir we might be able to transform. And looks like another go for the throats, at least we're getting rid of those. And there we go, Pyroclasm, just what uh, Doctor ordered. So get our two cards back. Sadly wouldn't be able to play any of them right now. But next turn, Twin Flame might make an appearance. Opponent's got two cards left in hand. Might be an answer to the Servant, and they're debating whether or not it's worth taking out. A Ritual Chamber making a Demon instead. Alright, that's a good one. Although so is Twin Flame Tyrant, especially multiples. does not double the damage from a potential annex should that come up it's only sources we control and this is also technically life loss opponent does unlock the annex so really hoping they don't have instant speed removal for twin flame since i might want to play the warmonger which can attack into the demon thanks to the tyrants or I could just play another Tyrant first, and then next turn try and set up lethal. Yeah, maybe that's still better. Don't want to attack now, even though we could trade. If Servant attacks, double to 2, double to 4, still doesn't trade for a 6-6. Six, six. 
But looking at Demolition Field, perhaps, doesn't go for it. Would maybe fix our white mana. So we'll see. It's gonna be Archfiend, that's a good one. Another way to trade for a Twin Flame Tyrant. Now Pyroclasm would basically wipe the opponent's board, since we would also double the damage from it. And our opponent feels confident in an attack, perhaps. You have to be careful, because if I top deck uh, another dragon here, we could do a lot of damage. Invasion of Tarkir, not bad either. So if I go face, that's 8 damage, but probably better off taking out a demon. And then if I were to attack all out, including the Warmonger, I guess we'll see where we're at. So yeah, 2 damage, but it is going to get doubled twice. So we'll take care of the Archfiends, and then now play Warmonger, and attack all out, and then even if they block a Twin Flame, we should get there. Since that's going to be 7 times 4, basically, 28 damage coming across. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and is functional, assuming we can find an extra land or two. Facing black and green. So we've got double burst lightning. And between servants and orb, we can try and ramp out our five drops. Although this one may get answered. And no removal so far. So yeah, no proactive place, no instant speed interaction. Glissa's a good one, however. So we could double burst lightning it. I think playing orb to set up or 5 drops is still better, so we can attack with haste. And then Burst Lightning with Twin Flame in play can take care of Glissa by itself. Ooh, Frillback, that's too bad. It's gonna blow up our artifacts. So, can still play our dragon, but it's not going to be nearly as exciting as our opponent pulls ahead on cards. Alright, in that case, still kind of like Dragonhawk first, in the hopes of maybe Twin Flame plus Burst Lightning in the same turn. And then Dragonhawk could hit for a lot of damage next turn. But now Annoyance takes care of the Servants. Alright, at least Dragonhawk survives, it seems. And a Dread Knight. Sarkon, an interesting draw as well. Step one now is probably attack, hoping to maybe find an extra land we can play. Tyrant's awkward. So that's just two more damage. Alright, I'll go for Sarkon, keep a Burst Lightning. Could also play Devastator X equals one, just to have a Chum Blocker for Glissa. I guess that's reasonable. Because yeah, next turn Twin Flame with Sarkon out is certainly lethal. Archfiend is acceptable. You have Glissa hits us, they can just destroy the Devastator by removing counters. If I chump, I guess they do get to drain me with Archfiend, but that would happen no matter what. So, chumping is just better. So I can now play Twin Flame. Transform Sarkon. And if we attack all out... Our opponent can at most block one dragon, and the other one goes through, dealing 12 damage in this case. And there we have it. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand's a bit of a mixed bag. We've got removal, a way to discount, a way to ramp, and then Warmonger hopefully to find our dragons. And then a third land would also be appreciated. So, yeah, this hand's borderline, but I'll try it. Missing a dragon 
means this hand may not do a whole lot. But gotta believe in the Warmonger. Now we'll fetch Mountain so we don't have to take a bunch of damage of Shivan Reef. Put it on a blue-white Oculus deck, it seems. Prankster to mill. So they already have a full graveyard. So what do we think of this matchup? Our burn spells unlikely to take out a 5 toughness Oculus, unless we use more than one. But a 4 toughness Haughty Gin is maybe more beatable. And there's Sarkon. For now, play Servants. Our opponent still didn't mill any creatures to reanimate. But they can maybe hard cast an Oculus. Which is what's happening, I think. Nope, just a Kiora, another new addition from Foundations. Pretty good if it gets a chance to attack, making an 8-8, since the graveyard's already filled. Although we can take that one out a little bit more easily. Opponent did discard a Haughty Djinn, which they can likely return next turn with founding chapter 3. Alright, so can't afford to let Kiora attack. So the most mana efficient play here would be Orb into Burst Lightning. I may as well hit for one. Even though a Kick Burst Lightning could be an answer to a 4 Toughness Haughty Gin, but with Recommission it's going to be 5 Toughness anyway. So we wouldn't be able to necessarily stop that. They might also be tempted to get Kiora back, which now requires us to draw a Dragon to deal 3 damage. And I guess the Warmonger can maybe find one, so we can still attack. Maybe find a dragon and then invasion deals three. And now Oculus and the graveyard, which they might be able to bring back with a helping hand. Alright, that's a lot of threats for us to deal with now. Did not find a dragon. And our opponent can even trade their 2-2, whereas before we might have been able to attack multiple times with the Warmonger. At least we found a dragon. Opponent trades, so at least it means it's not another Oculus they would be able to transform. And then our invasion deals 3 damage to Kiora. So, if our opponent doesn't leave any flying blockers back, we maybe get a chance to connect with a Twin Flame Tyrant. Now, we are still the controller of the invasion, so we don't get to deal double damage to it, I believe. Our opponent's just protecting it. And our opponent's casting another Oculus. So, find a Zergo now. 4-4 four, four is not quite big enough. If I go Sarkon, Twin Flame is 3 mana, which we're still a little bit short of casting. So, best I can do is Sarkon plus Servants. Or just play Tyrants and then... Basically trade it for an Oculus. I think we'll try and set up for next turn, but uh, might be too little too late. But you never know, if our opponent doesn't keep any blockers back, there's a chance we can sneak in lethal with Sarkon copied. Although our opponent could also have lethal if any of these face down cards is a flyer. Just hits this for 10. And I guess they can also play a prankster to trump with. Opponent manifests a bunch. And 
And then we gotta make sure to use Cavern of Souls on the Twin Flame. And the Orb as well, so it's actually gonna have haste. And then we can still play Zergo. So that happens. Play Zergo no Jitai. And if by some miracle her opponent doesn't have any interaction, this could be a lethal attack. But I have to imagine there's some removal incoming. Soul Partition, Sarkon. You have another removal spell. Soul Partition, the Twin Flame. Alright, so just sit for four. And find, doesn't matter at this point, another Sarkon. Alright, GG's. And then double Oculus can cross the finish line. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands got potential. If we pick up a land or two, got servants, Sarkon discounting our tyrants, orb to maybe even give it haste. And with double tyrants, we can present lethal out of nowhere. Opponents, a red black, maybe graveyard deck. So, yeah, if we can just draw lands from here on out, I'm pretty happy. Fear of missing out close to delirium. Discards an instant. Alright, we could take out their creature here. If we play Invasion of Tarkir, reveal a dragon. Yeah, that might be worth it. As opposed to playing Servants, which I'm sure we'll find a spot to play later. And no need to reveal more than one Twin Flame just to hide some information. Preacher could be a problem. Luckily found the land. So, yeah, kind of like Orb, even though we don't get to make use of the mana it can generate right away. If I play, I guess I can't even play Sarkon since Cavern is naming Dragon, so that's an easy play then. And a bitter union. Discarding. Another copy. The rest is gonna miss. All creatures. So this does look like a reanimator deck, but they just haven't found their big payoffs to put in the graveyard yet. Burst Lightning, in combination with a Warmonger, can finish off the invasion of Tarkir. Although developing Sarkon might be worth it. Also, Warmonger dies to a cutdown, which they could easily have left. Whereas Sarkon does not. So, yeah, let's run out Sarkon. Sadly, it doesn't keep a Burst Lightning either. Because of Cavern on Dragon. Possible this should have named something else. Shaman, I guess, would count for Servant and Sarkon. But yeah, now we're in a position to play a Hasty Tyrant with Sarkon in play. So if they don't respect that, they could die. So do I want to block the 1-1? One, one? Sort of implies a 3 damage burn spell. Maybe a Carnosaur would make sense as something that a reanimator deck would play. So I'll just take it. And then a land would still be a decent draw, especially red mana. Uh, the Elder Dragon War. 2 damage is not enough, so just discarding and drawing. But now the ghost is clear, so with two Twin Flame Tyrants attacking, they essentially deal 24 damage, so that should just be game. And we do see Zombify. Alright, so play Twin Flame. Could even go Servant first and then play Hasty Twin Flame, or we can Burst Lightning. And actually, I believe we can Burst Lightning... Let's see. You control will deal damage to an opponent or a permanent. Now, if the invasion is still controlled by us, so Burst Lightning would not deal additional damage to it. 
So otherwise we could have transformed the invasion. I guess I can show this just for science. But yeah, only deals two damage since we technically control the battle. But as we said, double tyrants with haste is still plenty. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hands missing a couple of lands and a couple of dragons. Can deal three damage with Invasion of Tarkir, which is not even enough to necessarily transform the second copy. Although Orb setting up a hasty Dragonhawk could be fun. Yeah, I guess with two more lands, this hand's decent. With one more land, it's functional. So I'll try it. And we can fetch a blue source. Devastator means I can deal four damage with an invasion of Tarkir. And it also allows me to maybe transform the first invasion more easily. I luckily found the land. So just play an orb and pass. Opponent's likely keeping up removal anyway. And then I could technically transform the invasion next turn by playing another one. And then an X equals one Devastator. Would be five damage total. Deep Cavern Band's gonna have a look. Likely going for the second invasion. But now we've got other options, especially if we draw an untapped land. And opponent actually takes a Devastator. A Lightning Strike. Not a bad draw. So maybe we go Orb. Keep up Lightning Strike with a plan of likely taking out the Deep Cavern Bats. And then Invasion can potentially deal more than 3 damage. Can maybe take the hit for now. Especially if they play another Bats. Yep. So we'll take that one out, since it's more important to keep Dragonhawk in hand. And then Hasty Dragonhawk, they wouldn't be able to remove for one mana. So we'll get to Transform Invasion. Maybe shouldn't have played land yet, Burst Lightning was an amazing draw. So now we get to take out the bats. And then hit the invasion for five, transforming it. Finding a tyrant, that one's gonna go to waste sadly, but uh, yeah, still can't complain. We've got our Thunder Maw in play. Opponent's at 15, and next turn potentially facing lethal. But I imagine they'll have some removal. Takes out Dragonhawk. Hopefully they don't have a second go for the throat. And that's just going to be a Devastator for five, I think. Right, turns out our opponent had two removal spells. So, yeah. Went from a dominating board state to just hitting for five. Although we do have some more burn in hands, can now kick a burst lightning pretty easily, dealing four. So if we can get one more attack in with the Devastator, that would be great. Flash Corger has lifelink, but doesn't attack right now, and the Misery Shadow. Alright, so we should have it here. Play Invasion, and now with the untapped land we can play kick burst lightning at their face. Otherwise we would have been in a position to transform the Invasion of Tarkir, which would have been decent too. But may as well win the game. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is missing a dragon. Cavern can name Shaman to cast Sarkon. And then we've got removal for days. So we'll see how this plays out. Opponent on red aggro. Yeah, I'll hang on to the burst lightning, see if our opponent tries to play pump spell on hardfire. 
And now we have double burst lightning to respond. Right, manifold mouse we can also take out. So I probably do want to play Sarkon next turn, so I think this is just a double burst lightning turn. And then we're setting up Sarkon into Devastator. And hopefully we can outrace them with a big flyer. Now Sarkon not the best synergy with a Devastator in that we don't want to turn Sarkon into a 0-0. The plus one counters don't quite translate. Challenger we can block. And uh, yeah, I think making a 4-4 is good enough here. So we'll fetch Islands. Or could make it Plains now too, since we drew the Spire Bluff. So we can maybe play Zurgan Ojutai later. And the Sarkon attack. Put on likely as a pump spell next turn anyway, so I wouldn't be able to necessarily hold off the challenger. So we'll get in there. And then we would love to draw Twin Flame Tyrants. We just end the game here. As our opponent hits us for four. And yeah, ask and you shall receive. Sarkon turns into a Twin Flame. Attack. And that's seven times two times two. So that's well over a lethal. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. A lot of burn and a warmonger. I guess it's reasonable to keep. Can beat aggressive creature decks. And then warmonger a source of card advantage, finding dragons. Although the rest gets to have a look. They did take a burst lightning. Can still answer a deep cavern bat with a second copy. And then Servant was a good turn two pickup. And Sarkon, pretty good too. Alright, so we're prepared to start drawing dragons now. Although Cutdown will take care of Servant. If they have another Cutdown up, playing Warmonger is less exciting than getting Sarkon in place, so I'll start there. And now we can just play Zergon Ojutai. Get our planes. Transform. Attack. Get two triggers. Finding at this point another lightning strike isn't bad. And then do I want to pick up a dragon? I don't have to. Although it is pretty good long term to just pick up Zergon Ojutai so we can just keep replaying it over and over. Assuming Sarkon survives. And now maybe look for a land. Cavern of Souls should be serviceable. Dragonhawk is good too. Say so yeah, an embarrassment of riches. So what's the worst case scenario? I pick Cavern and our opponent has a targeted discard spell for Zergon Ojutai somehow. But then we're still in decent shape. With Warmonger finding more dragons. So yeah, let's not be too greedy. And I'll keep Sarkon in play, of course. Opponent did have the Liliana, so that can remove Sarkon. Instead of replaying Zergo, I may want to finish off Liliana some other way. Because Zergo doesn't get to return to my hands if I damage a Planeswalker specifically. So instead we can go for a Warmonger, finish off Liliana, and then maybe play Invasion second main after picking up another Dragon. Devastator will do. Oh, that's my cue to leave. And that's now four damage. And can even transform the invasion with double lightning strike if needed. Opponent did have the cutdown, so possible they had it a couple turns ago already. 
and a slasher. So they are threatening lethal through the uh, blood letter. All their opponent is at eight. So I've got six points of burn in hand. Yeah, not quite enough to end it right now. So instead what I could consider is Devastator Transform Invasion of Tarkir. We'll have a blocker back, so there's no combination of cards that kills me. Even if they play Bloodletter, I can still block. And then we'll have a 5-5 Devastator, which in combination with the burn spells can maybe end the game next turn. I think I like that plan. But yeah, going face here would be a mistake, because we just die on the spot to a bloodletter. Can certainly take the hit. And then now there's a lot of ways we can end it. If our opponent lets us go to attackers... Then the triggers plus lightning strike would be lethal, but may as well play Zorgonogitai. Opponent is gonna try and remove our creatures, but yeah, nowhere to run doesn't quite do it, and that's more than enough. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a fine hand. Turn one burst lightning. May need to name Shaman with one of the caverns to play Sarkon. And the rest is gonna take the lightning. Yeah, there's a lot of discard decks on the ladder right now, apparently. Found a replacement lightning to maybe snipe a bat. And then Sarkon into a 4-drop is hopefully the curve. And there it is, a ride on Q. So the first cavern still probably naming Dragon. Alright, now I can play Spar Bluff, even though it gives the opponent a bit more info. I might draw another Spire Bluff next turn, and then it's better this way. Their opponent is on the Demon's deck, playing a bit of blue as well, it seems. Alright, so no longer needs to name Shaman. And then really hoping Sarkon survives, because my hand's getting pretty clunky otherwise. Alright, sadly you go for the throat. Opponent playing a red as well, so yeah, not entirely sure what to expect. Backup Sarkons appreciate it. Might have actually wanted to name Shaman this time in case they had a counter spell, but yeah, it doesn't strike me like a deck necessarily playing those. I see Solkanar, so yeah, this is a handoff deck. So probably playing Harmless Offering to give away Solkanar before it's too late. Or uh, rather cards like Demonic Pact as well. Well, either way, I can play Twin Flame and then hit the opponent for a decent amount here. I think I prefer that over the alternatives. Because once you get our opponent low enough, we can maybe finish them off with a Zergo or a Dragonhawk. So our opponent's at 6. Solkanar also demon to synergize with Annex, and our opponent's got another one. And I'll take five. And Liliana can make a sacrifice, but opponent's already in trouble here. So, yeah, I guess we'll sack. It's actually interesting because our opponent will gain four life up to ten. If I keep Twin Flame, next turn play Dragonhawk. Enters dealing uh, basically 4 damage, or we can play Zorgonogitai, that's probably more straightforward. And sack Sarkon for now. And then, yeah, Solkanar also triggers, so that can also gain them more life. But with Zorgonogitai, we're looking at uh, 14 damage total, so they're not gonna survive that. Alright, let's get going. And hit you for 14. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hands got two lands. 
with the third. Problem is we've got so many three drops, so we've got a bit of a clog here. But I'll try it. At least with Orb, we can start double spelling at some point. Warmonger finding dragons means we'll have a way to spend all that mana we generate. Opponent black green, so mid-range deck. Bronco find target for invasion. No need to show them the Devastator. And in this matchup, don't expect Sarkon to survive if we run it out here. So Orb might be the play. Dread Knight also blocks Warmonger, but I would get a trigger out of it. I'll still go for Orb. Can maybe top deck a 5 mana dragon and play it with haste. And then next turn we can double spell Orb plus another 3 drop. Another Dread Knights. One could still be keeping up Cutdown. Which does answer the Warmonger, does not take out Sarkon. So that seems like a fine play for now. And it also blocks uh, Dread Knight pretty well, so our opponent's likely gonna remove Sarkon. But then Devastator can transform Invasion at once. And hopefully we'll be able to catch up. Alright, so X equals 5. If I play Servants, I can play it's X equals 4, which doesn't quite transform the invasion, so I think this is still the play. Also would have gotten exiled by an Anoint, but they could still easily have cut down in hand, as we mentioned. But yeah, if they can't remove Thunder Maw, we can start mowing down their creatures turn after turn. Cottage gets in. We'll block a Dread Knight, take 7. So we do need to keep back a potential blocker for the Cottage. But that shouldn't be too difficult. It is tempting to play Warmonger. So I can go Servant, Warmonger, plus Devastator all in one turn. X equals 2. And we'll see if they have a response. They did not seem to have a cutdown. So if I go all out, what happens? 3 Thunder Maw triggers is 6, 17, 20. So it's a little bit short of lethal. So in that case, maybe I leave the 5-5 Devastator back. And then I have Servant and Devastator. And then we can finish off Dread Knights. Deal 2 to their face. And hopefully find another Dragon. Perfect. So even if they have removal for Servants, we still have Devastator to maybe block the Cottage. And the other way around. And in the worst case scenario, which would be a sweeper, I still have a Dragonhawk to get in. Opponent's looking for answers, but doesn't look like they'll have enough ways to stop all our threats. Back up to 10. And yeah, just playing Dread Knight's not gonna cut it. Can play Dragonhawk with haste. Finding three more cards, and uh, sure, why not? Twin Flame with haste. Attack all out. And that's a lot of deadly triggers. GG. Gotta be careful not to click on my profile to say good game, since I might end up dealing damage to myself. And even found another dragon. Awesome. 
All right, so we got to see our Jeskai dragons in action. And yeah, the curve of Sarkon into Twin Flame is what it's all about. Presenting a lethal out of nowhere, especially if we can also attack with a third creature or potentially can give the Devastator haste to attack with both right away. Now, setting that up is not always easy, especially against the more controlling decks with lots of uh, spot removal. Against aggro, we also stand the chance of getting run over before we can cast any of our expensive dragons. So overall, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this deck as something very competitive, but if you're a fan of dragons, this is certainly a build worth looking at. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.